Inside a sterile white room in Taiwan, machines worth more than most countries' GDP hum through the night. Workers in full-body suits move like astronauts between towering metal chambers that etch patterns smaller than vine viruses onto silicon wafers. Each wafer holds hundreds of chips that will power your phone, your car, your life. But here's what keeps executives in Silicon Valley awake at night. This one island, Taiwan, manufactures over half the world's advanced semiconductors. When the machines stop, the digital world stops with them. The year was 1987. Morris Chang, a 56-year-old former Texas Instruments executive, walked into a meeting room in Xinchu, Taiwan, carrying a business plan that industry experts called financial suicide. Chang wanted to build a company that only made chips for other people's designs. No major semiconductor company had ever survived without designing its own products. The established players like Intel and Motorola controlled everything from concept to customer. Chang's pitch was simple. He would take production technology from Dutch giant Philips in exchange for a 27.6% stake. Taiwan's government would fund 48.3% through the National Development Fund. The remaining quarter would come from private investors. The math looked clean on paper, but the execution required betting Taiwan's technology future on an untested business model. In 1987, Chang founded TSMC and faced immediate skepticism when Intel unexpectedly visited to outsource older chip production. Chang said yes to Intel's request, trading immediate revenue for long-term credibility. The trade-off was brutal. TSMC's first year ended with a loss, but Chang had something no competitor could match, neutrality. He wouldn't compete with his customers for end market sales. The hidden cost became clear by 1990. TSMC faced its second loss year as the company struggled to establish its foundry model. Traditional semiconductor companies watched Taiwan pour government money into what looked like a failing experiment. Chang stood at a crossroads. He could pivot to designing TSMC's own chips, following conventional wisdom, or double down on pure manufacturing. Chang chose the harder path. He refused to compete with customers and instead focused on perfecting the manufacturing process. The clause no one read in TSMC's founding documents gave the company exclusive rights to certain Philips technologies. This legal fine print would prove more valuable than anyone imagined as demand for specialized chips exploded in the 1990s. The moment of no return came in 1994. Chang announced TSMC would invest in advanced fabrication facilities that cost more than Taiwan's annual defense budget. The semiconductor industry requires constant upgrades, fall behind on technology, and customers disappear overnight. Chang was betting the company's future on staying ahead of Moore's Law, the prediction that chip performance doubles every two years. Most industry watchers missed the crash signal hidden in plain sight. By the late 1990s, dozens of small chip design companies had sprouted across Silicon Valley, all dependent on TSMC for manufacturing. These fabulous companies, firms that design chips but own no factories, were creating a new ecosystem. If TSMC stumbled, hundreds of technology companies would lose their only reliable manufacturer. The fallout hit households in ways most people never connected to Taiwan. When your Nokia phone worked in 1999, when your gateway computer booted up, when your Cisco router connected you to the early internet, Taiwan-made chips powered the experience. TSMC's chips eventually powered more than 12,000 products worldwide, from smartphones to AI systems. American families buying their first DVD players were unknowingly dependent on a single island's manufacturing capacity. Behind closed doors, Chang implemented a fix that reshaped global technology. He refused to put all production eggs in one basket. TSMC built multiple fabrication plants called fabs, each capable of producing different types of chips. When one fab went down for maintenance or encountered problems, others could pick up the slack. This redundancy cost billions, but prevented single points of failure. The aftershock reached Steve Jobs in Cupertino. As Apple developed the first iPhone in the mid-2000s, Jobs discovered that advanced mobile processors required manufacturing precision that only TSMC could deliver at scale. Apple, the most valuable company in America, needed Taiwan to exist. Jobs signed exclusive contracts that gave TSMC guaranteed volume in exchange for cutting-edge production capabilities. The Ledger Truth changed everything by 2020. 
TSMC controlled 54% of global foundry revenue, with Taiwan dominating the semiconductor industry through TSMC alone, accounting for over 50% of the global market. What started as Morris Chang's risky experiment had become the invisible backbone of the digital economy. Every major technology company from Apple to Nvidia depended on Taiwan for their most advanced chips. Second order costs multiplied across industries. Car manufacturers in Detroit discovered that their vehicles needed hundreds of semiconductors for everything from engine management to entertainment systems. When a COVID-19 outbreak temporarily shut down parts of Taiwan's chip production in 2021, global auto production lines went dark. General Motors and Ford, companies that had never heard of TSMC in 1987, suddenly understood their dependence on one island. The automotive crisis revealed the true scope of Taiwan's semiconductor dominance. Modern cars contain over 1,000 chips, controlling everything from anti-lock brakes to lane departure warnings. Electric vehicles need even more semiconductors to manage battery systems and charging protocols. Tesla discovered that a single missing chip could sideline an entire production line. Ford's CEO admitted publicly that his company had treated semiconductors like ordinary commodities, never considering supply chain vulnerability. European automakers suffered even worse disruptions. Volkswagen, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz had built just-in-time manufacturing systems that assumed chip supplies would never falter. When Taiwan's production hiccuped, German factories that had run continuously for decades suddenly went silent. Workers who had never heard of semiconductors found themselves unemployed because of events on an island 6,000 miles away. Regulators in Washington arrived decades too late to the realization. U.S. officials discovered that China's attempts to build competing chip manufacturers had largely failed, with multiple multi-billion dollar Chinese firms going bust, including a $20 billion scam operation. America's technology independence assumed for generations existed at the mercy of Taiwan's political stability. The Department of Commerce began mapping supply chain vulnerabilities they should have tracked in the 1990s. A brief calm settled over the industry in 2022, as TSMC announced plans to build manufacturing facilities in Arizona. American politicians celebrated reshoring critical technology, but industry insiders knew the uncomfortable truth. The Arizona fabs would produce older generation chips, Taiwan would keep the crown jewel technology, the most advanced semiconductors that power artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Pressure mounted from an unexpected direction in 2024. TSMC controlled an estimated 64% of the pure play foundry market, dwarfing Samsung's 12% share, while serving top clients including Apple, Nvidia, and AMD. This concentration of power in one company, on one island, in one of the world's most geopolitically sensitive regions, created a new type of systemic risk. The digital economy had built itself around a single point of failure that happened to sit 100 miles from mainland China. The mathematics of dependence painted a stark picture. TSMC manufactured 90% of the world's most advanced chips, those built with transistors smaller than 10 nanometers. These chips powered artificial intelligence systems, cryptocurrency mining rigs, and advanced military hardware. China's attempts to build competing facilities had largely failed, burning through over $100 billion in government investments with little to show for results. Pentagon analysts ran war game scenarios that kept Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin awake. Any disruption to Taiwan's chip production would cripple American military systems within months. F-35 fighter jets, Patriot missile systems and satellite communication networks all depended on Taiwanese semiconductors. America's most advanced weapons couldn't function without chips made on an island that China claimed as its territory. The irony wasn't lost on industry veterans. Morris Chang's 1987 bet on manufacturing excellence had accidentally created the world's most valuable geopolitical asset. The same neutrality that made TSMC attractive to customers now made Taiwan indispensable to global powers. China couldn't invade without destroying the industry it desperately wanted to control. America couldn't protect Taiwan without acknowledging its technological dependence. Today, that sterile room in Taiwan where chips smaller than viruses take shape 
holds more geopolitical weight than most military bases. The ozone smell and the hum of billion-dollar machines represent something unprecedented in human history. Never before has so much of civilization's daily function depended on one island's industrial capacity. Your morning alarm, your car's brakes, your bank's servers, all trace back to those white rooms where workers in astronaut suits tend to silicon wafers. Morris Chang's 1987 gamble created more than a successful company. He built the hidden foundation of the 21st century, a foundation that happens to sit on an island that China claims as its own territory. Every smartphone video call, every AI breakthrough, every electric vehicle depends on Taiwan's ability to keep those machines humming through typhoons, earthquakes, and rising political tensions. The future of your digital life now hinges on the geopolitics of a small island most Americans couldn't locate on a map. When you swipe your phone tonight, remember that single action relies on supply chains stretching across oceans to reach the place that runs your digital world. The most powerful companies on Earth have built their empires on Taiwan's Silicon Foundation. What happens when the island that runs everything becomes the center of the world's next great conflict?